Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And while you're standing, I want to just declare Psalms 91 over you. And I had it marked and I decided to do that song and now I got to find it again. But we have these little bracelets that we gave out last weekend. And if you weren't here and you didn't get yours, be sure and pick one up. They're out on a table and you can just pick them up as, you, as you're leaving. But put them on your children as they go back to school. Put it on your own risk as you go about. And Psalms 91 is so powerful. And they're going to put it up and we're going to read it together. But I want you to declare it because we can have freedom from fear. Do you believe that? Let's declare it boldly. Everybody ready? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. Your truth shall be a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays at waste at noonday. A thousand may fall by your side and 10,000 by your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Come on, say it big. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion, the serpent. You will trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will even honor him. With long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. If you receive it and believe it and declare it over your family and your life, give him praise right now. Hallelujah. You're under the shadow of the Almighty. Praise his wonderful name. God bless you. Smile at somebody on your way down. Just smile at them real good. I'm going to preach to you for just a minute, and we'll come back and sing before we leave here today. It's so good to see you here. How many of you are happy? Are you glad to be in church? Looks like we, looks like we are uh, good in social distance. And to those of you in overflow and to those of you at all of our campuses, we're so thankful. What an amazing weekend we had last weekend. And I just think God's going to do something special here this morning. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 6. And uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6, and I want to read this scripture, and then I want to share with you what God has laid upon my heart. In verse 3, so they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadad, which was on the hill. Everybody say the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, according, accompanying the ark of God. And Ohio went before the ark. Then David and all the house of Israel played music before the Lord with all kinds of instruments of wood and harps and stringed instruments and tambourines. You know why they do that? Because when you're in God's presence... You're supposed to praise the Lord. And when they came to Nachon's fleshing, threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah and God struck him there for his error and he died by the ark of God. 
And David became angry at the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? And I'm going to prove to you that he answers his own question in the book of Psalms because this, this is a big question that has to be answered. How can I get God's presence to come to me? I want to talk to you for a few moments this morning on sanitize your hands and your heart. Sanitize your spirit. You know, if you've been around church, that the story talked about here in 2 Samuel is David is finally bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. He goes and retrieves it, and they put it on a new cart. Now, God had always commanded that before when the, when the ark, which was a God box, a big box that had the tables of stone and some manna in it and the, the rod that budded and some other things, but they, that box also had the big mercy seat, but it was to be carried upon the shoulders of the priest. And the scripture said that they put it on a new cart. They thought that they could entertain the presence of God with a new cart, that it would be all right. And as they were going down the path that they were going, the cart hit a pothole, we would call it. And suddenly, when the wheel went into the hole, the, the whole ark was unsteady and it began to fall. And Uzzah reached up and with his hands, he touched that ark. Touched the ark and instantly he died because his hands were not prepared to touch the holy. In Jeremiah 25 and verse 61, God says, Provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and then I'll do you no harm. But he said, How your hands are before me if they're unclean, if they haven't been washed, it matters to me, God said, the works of your hands, and I don't want you to take unclean hands and try to handle holy things. It's amazing that we've been reminded over and over and over in the last six months of this pandemic. It's amazing the amounts of millions and millions of dollars that have been spent on commercials and advertisements and brochures warning people, trying to inform people that one of the greatest defenses that we have against this virus is to wash our hands. Um, a campaign blitz has been released by the greatest scientists and people in the medical field and even celebrities and all of kinds of people have done commercials trying to get young people and children and older people and elders to wash their hands. How critical it is that we use sanitizer, that we do what we need to do to kill the germs that are gathering on our hands all day if you don't wash them. The medical world has told you to wash your hands, but not to cleanse your heart. And I think we need to add to the washing of the hands outwardly, the cleansing of the heart inwardly is the only thing that can heal America. America does not have just an outward issue. It has an inward heart issue. Pilate washed his hands, but his heart was still wrong. And it's possible to wash your hands in public, but to not be clean in your heart in private. What we do in private determines whether God will use us publicly in a significant way. Something was not right with Uzzah. Something was wrong in his private life and God knew about it. And that's why, because God doesn't just send this kind of judgment to somebody's life because he wasn't having a, a good day up on the throne. There was a real reason that when that man with his unclean hands touched that ark, he died instantly. When I think about this pandemic that we've been through, social media, I believe, has put a magnifying glass on who we are in private. If people are willing to show and to say so much filth, 
publicly, if they're willing to show themselves in ways that we can't even imagine a Christian doing in public, what in the world is going on in their life in private? Pilate washed his hands good publicly. He made a good show of it. He went through the motions. But when he got in a private meeting with Jesus, Jesus did not change his heart. He washed his hands publicly, but his heart was unclean. And you have to sanitize your hands and your heart if you want to entertain the presence of God and be in his presence. Clean hands without a pure heart will still crucify people. That's what Pilate teaches us. And clean hands, people who look religious on the outside, but their hearts are unclean. They crucify people. They talk bad. They gossip. They rip people to pieces on, online. They, they're cruel and mean and angry and upset because their heart is unclean, even if their hands look real religious. As I travel, it amazes me. I spend a lot of time in airports. And when I go in the airport, I've done it so many times when I'm washing my hands in the bathroom, it absolutely to this day still astonishes me. I'll see it almost every time I go in there. I can't speak for the women. I can't speak for the women's restroom. I don't go in those restrooms. Uh, I know the difference between the male and the female restroom. And I go into the male restroom. And when I go in there, it is so amazing. As I'm washing my hands, I will see men come right out of the stall. And they're right on their phone, and they'll keep right on walking. And it never dawns on them, I ought to clean my hands, I ought to wash my hands. And the Lord sent me today. I'm sorry if you came for a nicey-nicey sermon. I, I, I preached that one last week, and I gave you one week off. Here we go. Something is happening spiritually when we believe that we can approach God with dirty hands and impure hearts. And I'm afraid that this pandemic has caused many people to let up on their spiritual disciplines and let up on their Bible reading and let up, and they've been so entertained with other things and filled their eyes with other things. And we are facing a flood with our children and our grandchildren of all kinds of things. And without months of church, it's possible that they have accumulated dirty hands and unpure hearts. But it's all right. All you gotta do is say, Lord, I wanna be clean again, and God will make you clean again. And here's what I want you to see. In Psalms 24 and verse 3, David asked this question. Remember, he said when he watched his friend Uzzah die, he then comes back to the ark and all the commentaries agree that this is, this is, this psalm was written by David after he watched Uzzah, his friend, with unclean hands touch the Holy Spirit. Ark of the Covenant and die. And then he asks this question. He picks up the story and he says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? And then look at what he says. He who has clean hands. That's a direct reference to Uzziah. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. And what happened to Uzziah when he didn't have clean hands and a pure heart? He who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. What he is saying to us is if we want to ascend the hill and stand in the holy place of God. And notice that in 2 Samuel, it kept talking about the Ark of the Covenant was at a heel. So what he's doing is he's answering his own question. And he says, I know the answer. I know how I can get into the holy place. I know how we can bring the Ark back. I know what it's going to take. We're going to have to do more than just sing and praise God. And go through a routine of church. But we have to have clean hands. If you want to know who can ascend the hill. If you want to know who can get in the holy place. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. When Uzzah went to that ark and he touched it. His hands were not prepared for something that holy. Without clean hands and a pure heart. 
we cannot entertain the presence of God. Make sure that we don't try to come back from this pandemic pause with the filth of the world all over us. But every now and then, we just need a cleansing. Every now and then, we need to say, Lord, sanitize my spirit. Sanitize my mind. Sanitize my hands and my body. Make it a temple of the Holy Ghost. Carry, oh God, I want to carry your presence and I realize I can't do it by just being, carrying it on some convenient cart. You can't just have his presence. I'm sorry. At some point, you got to get back in church. At some point, you got to get off the couch and out of your pajamas and you got to get your family back to the house of God and say, Lord, cleanse our hands and purify our hearts. I know everybody's different. I know all of that, but I promise you, I believe this is an hour when God is saying, don't come back like you came. Don't bring all that stuff. People have, people have fallen away. They've lost their discipline. They haven't been praying. They haven't been seeking God and we're coming back, but now we need to come back with clean hands. We need to come back with a pure heart to go to the holy place. We cannot be casual about approaching God's presence. And I think that's something that I, when I was, you know, studying this message, I never could understand why it was that I cannot enjoy Saturdays. That, that when I know Sunday is coming, that it doesn't start, of course, on Saturday. It starts every day of our life. But for me, it's about preparation. I cannot approach God's presence casually. And I use that day. I worship. I read the word. I study. I, I listen to worship. I sing to the Lord in my office. I, 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 I never really thought about it until I saw this verse that, that the only way you can really get into God's presence and thereby cause others to enter into God's presence is, is if I approach God with a spirit that says, cleanse my hands and purify my heart. And that's why Saturday is a day that I fast most of the time till sundown because I'm trying to say sanitize my spirit, sanitize my mind. I can't approach this holy God in some casual, easy rolling cart that doesn't cost me anything. I want to feel the weight of his presence on my shoulder. And you say, well, Pastor Jensen, we really don't need to be reminded to live holy. Why are you preaching a sermon like this? If the highest officials of science and medicine are spending millions of dollars to remind people something they ought to already know, wash your hands, wash them often, wash them repeatedly, wash them after you use the bathroom, wash them after you touch something, wash them, wash them. If the world and the science message of this hour and health message of this hour is wash your hands, I think we need to stand up and remind God's people that you have to have pure hearts and clean hands. It's the only way you can approach a holy God. We still have to be sanctified. We still have to be holy. We still have to be different from the world. Hands cannot handle unclean, dirty hands cannot handle the holiness of God. And we need a revival of clean hands. Turn to somebody and say, wash your dirty hands and purify your heart. First Timothy chapter two and verse eight said, I desire in every place that men lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. I thought about how that we go into nice restaurants you know it's a nice restaurant, and it's not a nice one if you don't see this in the bathroom. On the back of the door of the bathroom of a good restaurant will be these words. All employees must wash their hands before returning to work. And I thought about, I think I'm just going to put that sign up as we're coming back to church. 
that all volunteers, that all pastors, that all employees, that all the singers and the musicians, don't you come in here and treat God's presence like it's some trifle, common thing, but let's get all the filth off and let's approach God in fear and in trembling and know that he's a holy God. All the singers, all the musicians, all the ushers, all the volunteers, every department head, all employees must wash their hands before returning to work. If you want to be used by God, if you want God's presence on your life and in your work and the work of your hands, you must offer God clean hands, not in your own works, not in what you can produce, but it's a cleansing I'm preaching about this morning. It's a true repentance that acknowledges I picked up some residue. I picked up some filth. I I, I, I need that good old fashioned Holy Ghost outpouring of the Holy. That's what we need. We need the Holy Ghost to rain down on us and wash our hands and cleanse our hearts. Everybody clap your hands like you know you need to wash them. If you're going to serve in the ministry, if you're going to open a door, if you're going to park a car, if you're going to get on the platform, wash your hands. Cleanse your heart. Who shall stand in the holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. There's too much fussing in the church. There's too much cussing in the church. Yeah, I meant what I said. I don't believe Christians can be foul mouth, blankety blank, blank, blank. I still believe in that old stuff. My parents used to wash my mouth with soap. They would take a bar of soap, and if I said a cuss word, and back then a little cuss word would be darn or dang it. And, it, and if you said that now, that, that now what y'all say now in this generation, we need, we need more than a, a, a bar of soap. We need, I'm telling you, every song is filthy. Come on. Every song, these songs, my goodness, some of the songs that are being put out and kids are just taking this in and taking it in. Wash your hands, oh, ye sinners, and purify your heart, oh, you double-minded. Too much, too much drunkenness in the church. Too much smoking and vaping in the church. Too much lying and cheating in the church. Too much adultery and fornication in the church. Dirty hands need a revival. Dirty hands need a revival. Dirty hands need God to come and convict us. Let us feel the sting of conviction until we feel clean again. Until we feel pure again. Until we feel like him again. Everybody praise the Lord. And you know what? The good thing about the pandemic is if you don't praise the Lord, it don't bother me. I preach to empty seats for six months. I don't even need your amens. I've learned how to do it without you. You know, I'll just teach you this. You don't know this. I'm going to teach you this. I read something interesting the other day. You know when Jesus says, verily, verily? Verily, verily. You ever, have you ever read that? Do you ever read the Bible? Verily, verily. He doesn't just say verily. Verily, verily. He, that means I'm really about to say something, right? You know what the Greek word for verily, verily is? A-M-E-N. Amen, amen. I love Jesus. He said, I know I'm not going to get no amens on what I'm about to preach, so I'm going to just go on and give myself my own amen. Amen, amen. And then he preaches and lays them in the shade. I don't need your amen. Look at me. I, you, can, you can blame it on the pandemic, but if we're not going into the stone ages around here. If you don't praise him, the rocks will cry out and praise him. But somebody's going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Take a praise break in the middle of the pandemic. You've been waiting on this. And shout through your mass. Shout that you are here and that he's cleansing your hands and purifying your heart.
Guard your heart with all diligence. Not some casual thing. Don't let stuff get in your life and just hang on you. Guard your heart with all diligence because you can be deceived. You can be shipwrecked. You can lose your marriage. You can end up in in an addiction you can't get out of. So guard your heart and wash your hands. Boy, hallelujah. Now, if you're a sinner and you're here, the dirtier, the better. But if you are one of our leaders and one of our pastors, it is required before you come back to work that you get a good washing in your hands. I wonder if my hands and my heart have stopped God from showing up in this house. Because he said in Psalms 24, in verse 5 and 6, he ends it by saying that if you get the clean hands and the pure heart, he shall receive the blessing of the Lord. That's in verse 5. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord. You understand that you're the only Bible. I hear people all the time talking about, you know, do you like the King James Bible? No, I don't like the King James. I like the I like the New King James. I like the Message Bible. I like the International Version. I like this and I like that. What kind? And you know, the only difference between them is some of them leave out certain uh, phrases and, and different wording. What kind of version of the Bible are you? What's left out of your version? Because you're the only Bible some people are going to read. And if we're slipping into carnality, if we know all the latest songs of extremely wicked people, and you don't have clean hands, and you don't have a pure heart, When I look at what's taking place, when I see things like Netflix putting a series out called Cuties about little adolescent girls 12 and 13 and 14 years of age and thousands of parents let their kids try out for that and dance vulgar. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a huge controversy because Our generation, something is going on, folks. Something is going on. California just passed a bill and the governor signed it that it's legal for pedophiles to get with children and minors. I'm not making this up. You need to understand. If you're just floating along in the culture, the culture is going to mess your family up. It's going to mess your children up. It's going to mess your marriage up. It's going to mess your morals up. And it's going to mess your spirit up. But you got to get sanitized in your spirit and say, Oh God, cleanse me. Give me, oh Lord, clean my heart. Clean my heart. Create in me a clean heart, David said in Psalms 51, and a pure spirit. When I see what's going on, I I just want to say that we don't have to be defiled when everybody's doing it. We don't have to be defiled. I don't want to be everybody. God used Noah's hands to build an ark because they were clean. God used Moses' hands to build a tabernacle because they were clean. God used the disciples' hands to distribute the fish and the bread that was multiplied. I've heard people preach that wrong. It does not say Jesus fed the 5,000. It says that he blessed and he broke it and he put it in the hands of the apostles and the apostles took it and when they would break it off, it would multiply. It did not come from Jesus' hands. He wanted to find clean hands that he could put the bread of life in to feed the multitudes. And he's looking in this generation. He's looking here. He's looking now. 
He's looking in this hour for clean hands that he can put the bread of life in. Come to the music. He's looking in this service for someone who will say, God, during the pandemic, I, I, I just need a cleansing. I don't want to return back as though I'm coming out of the stall with the phone up to my face. And I don't need to stop by the wash station and cleanse my hands and purify my heart. Take time, Lord. Take the time to wash my hands. He doesn't just wash feet, but he washes hands. He's ready to wash our hands this morning. Would you lift your hands up toward heaven? And would you say, God, I give you my hands. I want clean hands. Now put your hand on your heart and say, God, I give you my heart. Give me a pure heart. Stand to your feet all over this room. Search your heart for just a moment. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Sing it, church. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving and with thanksgiving, how be Everybody at every campus, lift your hands as an act of surrender and sing it again. Lord, prepare me. It's good to get in a service like this all alone. Examine yourself. Examine your spirit. Examine your heart. Examine your life. He's a holy God. Cannot approach him in a trifle way as though he is, he is just a common thing. I'll be a living. That's it. Worship him. Worship him. Take a few moments and let him wash you. Let him wash you. Let him take out any and everything that has attached itself to you. Be cleansed in the name of Jesus. Sing it one more time. Ooh, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I want to carry your presence. Who will ascend the hill? It's an invitation, but it's a question. Who? Means everybody's not going to pay the price. Who will stand in the holy place? He, she that has clean hands and a pure heart. I want it, Lord. I want it, Lord. Don't let me come this far and not have pure hands, clean hands and a pure heart. Sanctuary. In the presence of Jehovah, God. Would you sing to him? 
Take a moment. Take a moment. Just stand there in his presence. He's cleansing your hands. He's cleaning your hands and he's sanitizing your heart, your spirit. He's killing all the germs of sin, setting you free in your mind, washing you and pronouncing you free indeed. I want every leader of this church to raise up your hands toward heaven, whether it's on the platform or whether you lead in any fashion, in any way, in any ministry, and you are a part of any ministry. Just raise your hands and say, Lord, we're coming back to work, but not until you wash our hands, cleanse our hearts. Well, this is the, this is the prerequisite for revival. Want every young person that will to lift your hands toward heaven. Every young person in this room that would say, I, I, I need a good old fashioned cleansing. I need God to sanitize my mind. I, I've, I've kind of just, I've just kind of let myself drift into carnality. I would like to just get a good cleansing that right here, right now in this service, I need it. I can't just dismiss this service. I feel like the Holy Spirit really wants to do a washing and a cleansing and a sanctifying of his people this morning. In Jesus' name. 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 Jesus name. Praise his wonderful name. Praise his wonderful name. Isn't he good? Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this room, in overflow, if you're at any of our other campuses, and you would be honest and you would say, Pastor Franklin, I, during the pandemic, if I were to be honest, I feel like my hands have become dirty. My heart is not pure. I've lost something in my relationship with Jesus and I need to get back to him. I want fire in my bones again. I want praise in my mouth again. I want my mind to be clean and pure again. Pastor, pray for me. You preach this sermon to me today because I needed this kind of, you know, if God thought you needed a sweet little sermon, he had gave it to you. What you need is exactly what he had you here today. And he wouldn't tell you you could have clean hands and a pure heart if his Holy Spirit wasn't able to do it. So right where you are, if you'd say we can't call you forward, so we're going to pray for you right where you are at every campus. And if you would say, Pastor Franklin, pray for me. I know I'm not where I need to be. I know I'm not. Maybe you're totally backslid. Maybe you've just drifted away. And inside there's something in you that says, I would love to be washed again. 
Pray for me. If that's you, raise your hand high. I want to see it right now. Amazing. Amazing. Just raise it high. There's no shame in it. There's victory in it. There's victory in it. There's victory in it. Now just pray this prayer, everybody, out loud. Lord Jesus, you are the living water. And I receive your cleansing right now. Wash me and I shall be clean. Create in me a clean heart and a right spirit. I receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Would you clap your hands? Would you sing that last song that you did? Can we sing this one more time before we leave? I'm going to pray the, the blessing in a minute, but just sing what you sung that last praise worship. All my love. Yes. All my love. You can have it all. All my love. All my love. receive this today in the name of Jesus. Those of you who pray, we've got a, a whole station back there that if you gave your heart to the Lord for the first time or you prayed and you need to tell somebody what the Lord has done for you, we've got all kinds of things back there. It's, where's it at? It's outside, beautiful, even better, so that you can go outside and you can pick that up. If you want to give this morning, we deeply appreciate your support. There are giving stations outside. Are you ready for the blessing? Don't forget this message. Don't forget this message. All week long, every time you wash your hands, why don't you just purify your heart, sanitize your heart and your hands? Do you receive it in Jesus' name? Hey, I want to tell you something in closing. We have someone here today, a few people here today. They are filming a major motion picture in Atlanta. And uh, they, uh, they actually asked me, would I play one of the roles in the movie as a preacher? And uh, I, I wanted to do it, but I couldn't do it. And uh, now I don't know about that. But, uh, but I, it, it just didn't work out. I was so sorry that it didn't. But I'm so proud of these guys. They're making a powerful movie, a true story. And it's called Southern Gospel. It's called Southern Gospel. And it's about a man who became a rock star that went far from his faith and came back home to Jesus in the, in the South or something. I'm not sure how it all goes. But there's a bunch of, there's some preachers in it. And I was supposed to be one of them. But uh, it didn't work out. But we're glad that they're here. And I don't know where my brother went, that, that the director and all the folks that are involved in that. But we're praying for you. We're praying for you. That's amazing. It's a major motion picture going on downtown Atlanta. God's going to bless that. God's going to bless that. Amen. May his presence be on the set. In Jesus' name I pray. We're delighted you came to worship with us today. If you love the Lord, say amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
Make His face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. We love you so much. Everybody put your mask on. Put your mask on because it gets a little crowded in the... Then when you get outside, take it off and social distance and stay in fellowship and have a great time. We love you all. We'll see you next Sunday. Bring a friend next Sunday. Let's just go after souls now. People are ready. God bless you. We love you so much.